Well, good evening and welcome to another Wednesday Word. We're glad that you've tuned in and uh, pray that today's Word will bless you and what, wherever you're going through, whatever your walk is right now in life, that God will speak to you. So before we start, let's uh, have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray today as we study your word that you'll uh, speak to us, Lord. God, we'll have ears to hear and hearts to receive, Father, what you have to say to us today. Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Lord, we thank you for preserving this word for us, Lord God, that we can uh, grow in it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, we're continuing on with our study, keeping your eyes on the prize. And so if you have your Bibles, uh, open up to Philippians chapter 3. We're walking through these 21 verses of that chapter as we're looking at every point as it symbolizes a runner running in a race, uh, the regular physical runner compared to us, the Christian runner, and seeing those symbolisms. So we're up to, to verse 15 now as we've been walking through this, looking at the, the various symbolisms. First of all, we, we mentioned that a runner has to be legally in a race, and so do we. We need to be saved, so we're legally in the race. You know, we also mentioned that runners learn that you have to give up to gain, and the Christian runner has to have that same mentality. We also looked that runners must always be developing, growing with zeal and passion, and that's the Christian runner has to have that same mindset as well. We looked at runners must be focused on the prize, uh, on the end result, not get distracted. Hey, we have to do that as Christian runners as well. Uh, that's very important in our run. And then we're looking now at point number five, that runners need to receive correction and make corrections. You know, a runner, if he's going to be a good runner, he's going to have to receive correction from his coach. Uh, why? So he can run faster and then make those corrections um, that the coach recommends because uh, many times, you know, they're, they're, they can't improve. They can't get faster unless somebody's giving them some sort of input uh, so that to show them, hey, I see this in the way you're running. If you'll try this, this will make you run faster. We've got to do that as well. Listen to verse 15. Let us therefore, as many as are perfect, have this attitude. And if in anything you have a different attitude, God will reveal that also to you. Well, first of all, he says that we're perfect. Yes, positionally, we're perfect. You know, we're made perfect in Christ positionally uh, because we have to be perfect to enter heaven. Jesus said, be perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. So when we get saved, positionally we're made perfect so that we'll, we'll, we can gain entrance into heaven and be in the presence of God. Obviously, it's not our perfection or our righteousness. We receive Christ's perfection and righteousness when we come to know Christ. But practically, we're not perfect. Practically, we need to make those adjustments and corrections uh, in our life. Uh, that's really sanctification, becoming more like Christ each and every day. So we have to make corrections and adjustments. A lot of people say, well, I'm saved. That's it. No, that's the beginning. Uh, we listen and, and make those adjustments in our life. And so it talks about this attitude. What that is, is the way of thinking. You know, our thoughts dictate our actions. And so if we have the wrong attitude, we have the wrong actions. And so it, he's talking about having that right attitude. I believe he's referring a lot to what we already talked about, having that kind of attitude that we mentioned in those uh, first four points. Uh, but what happens if we don't? Well, he's saying that if you don't have that kind of attitude, the right attitude, the runner's attitude, then God's going to reveal that also to you. How does God reveal that? Well, he reveals it in his word. Uh, he reveals it in circumstances. You go through certain circumstances. He, he reveals it, I believe, through his Holy Spirit. He, he reveals it in prayer. He reveals it from other people, godly people that talk with us and give us counsel and direction. You know, he gives it through sermons and through Bible studies and just all kind of ways that the Lord reveals something to us. You know, especially when we're going through difficulty. And obviously difficulty doesn't mean that God's chasing you, but uh, 
we always should look and say, hey, if I'm going through difficulty, Lord, are you trying to show me something? Uh, are, are you revealing something to me that I haven't stopped to look at before? And again, while we go through things, you know, many times maybe we don't know if it's chastening or not chastening. It just may be like Job, you know, just it just is happening in our life. And so we need to examine it, though. I believe the first thing we do need to look at is saying, Lord, is there something you're wanting to reveal to me? Maybe there is a correction that I need to make that I hadn't had stopped to, to look at. I may I just excused it. May I just said, hey, that's just the way I am. And that's the way everybody is. And so let God, we need to all let God do this in our life uh, to make those adjustments. You know, if you look at Hebrews uh, 12 verse 5 and uh, it talks about about halfway in there it says my son do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord nor faint when you are reproved by him for those whom the Lord loves he disciplines and he scourges every son whom he receives it is not for discipline it is for discipline that you endure God deals with you as sons for what son is there in whom the father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Furthermore, we had earthly fathers to discipline us, and we respected them. Shall we not much rather be subject to the father of spirits and live? And they disciplined us for a short time as seem best to them. But he disciplines us for our good so that we may share in his holiness. All discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. It's talking about, hey, our Father in heaven disciplines us. And if we don't have any discipline, then we're truly not saved. We're not, we don't have that sonship relationship with the Father. But he does it, and it is not, doesn't seem good when we go through discipline, whether it's from your own Father or from your heavenly Father. But he mentions there, you're being trained like a runner. You're being trained by it so that afterwards it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. It it resulted in some correction, but you made the correction from hearing about the correction that made you a better runner, a better uh, uh, runner in the Christian race. You're more like Christ. That one thing that's been holding you up, that thing that's been uh, maybe a sin, a shortcoming, something that just has just been holding you up in the race, you got it, you got it right. And it didn't happen until you were disciplined. And again, that can come, as we mentioned, in various forms uh, from just hearing the world and being convicted or really just really God bringing you to that point in your life uh, that is sorrowful that God's able to do that work in your heart and your life. And he does it not for, he's not punishing us, he's correcting us uh, so that we can make those corrections uh, like this runner we are looking at makes in his life. So, uh, We've got to be, as runners, making those corrections, always looking at our life. You know, David even said to search me and search me and know my ways. He, 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 he wanted the Lord to look in there because we all have the uh, propensity to say, I'm all right. Everything's fine. And we, it's easy to look 20-20 at other people's sin and, and not be able to see our own. Uh, we always tend to think uh, to many times we justify it, but this is where we have to really as a runner focus to say, do I really want to improve or I'm just happy the way I am? And so we'll say as Paul, as David, search me, Lord, you search me because I don't want that. I don't have that tendency to just say everything's okay with me. I really, really want to be more like you and I want to see something in my life. Maybe somebody's brought it to my attention. Maybe the words brought it to my attention. I just say, ah, that's somebody else. That's somebody else's fault. That's, that's, but, but we need to make those adjustments in our life. So the next one about a runner 
is a runner has to obey the rules of the race. And we as Christian runners have to obey the rules of the race. You know, I think it's become in this new era, you know, that just love Jesus and that's all you need to do. But Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Keep the rules. And, and obviously, we're not saved by keeping the rules. We're saved by grace. But the Lord has given us commandments that are for our benefit. And if we're going to be a Christian runner, we need to know those commandments. We need to know the word so that we can run according to the word. You know, a runner would be real arrogant to say, you know what, it doesn't matter what the rules of this race, I'm just running it the way I want. Well, he'll find out that that doesn't work. He'll be disqualified either before the end of the race or definitely at the end of the race if he doesn't abide by the rules. And so we can't, we, I think the devil has, has entered into uh, Christianity and, and, and made, made it to be like, well, it's all about me and it's, it's not about, you know, I can do what I want to do and I'm under grace and uh, who cares if that scripture there's there or that scripture's there. Uh, the Lord knows I do all the other scriptures and, you know, we've entered into this seeker sensitive, this uh, not talk about sin and all those things. And, and we've entered into this point that where the, the, the rules and the scriptures and the commandments are not important. And they are for the, for the regular runner in a race and for the Christian runner. Verse 16, it says, however, let us keep living by the same standard to which we have obtained. We've got to We've got to look, you know, he, what he's saying, you know, we need to follow in line. I heard one guy say, what Paul's trying to say is stay in your lane. <laughs> you know, stay in your lane, do what, obey the rules, do what the running rules say to do, and uh, obey what God says to do. Uh, you know, you, if you're a parent, you know, when you have rules and, and things you have for your children, you know you're doing that for their own good. They may not see that. But everything that you implement, you're you're doing it for their good, uh, and, and as a child, they may not see it, but you, as a parent, do that so that one day maybe they will see it. But you do it anyway. And as as God, our heavenly Father, He knows much much more than we do, and His commandments are always beneficial to us. They may not seem that, just like we as a child didn't see maybe some of the rules of our parents as being beneficial, but they were, especially now that we look back, same way with our Heavenly Father. Those are beneficial to us. And so as a Christian runner, we, we've got to obey the rules. The next one is that runners, almost all runners have great role models. Really almost all athletes have great role models. Matter of fact, when they're interviewed, whether a runner, boxer, quarterback, you know, whatever the case may be, they'll they usually in the interview, they say, well, who did you look up to growing up? You know, who was your role model? Who was your hero? Uh, you know, obviously our, our main focus on all that needs to be Jesus. But the Lord puts people in our life that, that we see things in that help us. Now, obviously they'll disappoint us and they're not going to always be perfect. And so we can't put them up on the pedestal, but we can see some things that's lived out before us that we can implement in our life, that the Lord gives us, allows us, and that we ought to put ourselves in being around uh, strong, godly people so that we can pick up things that they do and say, you know, I want to be more like that. And, and I see that lived out in front of me and what a benefit that is. And all of us have gained from that certain things about how people handle people, uh, how, how they react, uh, just their demeanor. You know, it's just like, hey, I... I see Jesus in that, and I want to see more of that in me. And so I think that's, that's important. Listen to verse 17. Brethren, join in following my example and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. In other words, there's examples all around us, uh, good ones and bad ones, but we see those good ones around us and and we're able to, to learn from that and learn from those examples that, that God puts in our life to say, you know what? I like how that person does that. And uh, praise God that he gives us those. I know as a young man, you know, uh, as, as a saved man, to, to have 
godly friends, you know, that you can see that in. That doesn't mean that we don't interact with the lost because we should to be able to witness to them and draw them to the Lord. But, you know, it's great to have good Christian friends that we can see Jesus in there and, and be able to uh, look up to them and say, you know what, there's a lot in there that I want to be more like Christ. And so we have all these good examples that, that, that uh, Paul has lined out and, and, and what a great way to look at things when we see it in the example of a runner. That the runners, they run that race with all that passion, you know, and here they can see, they look, look around them and see things in other people that they want in their life. So anyway, uh, let's have a word of prayer and we'll close out. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this word, Lord, that you've given us. God, to encourage us in our race. Lord, we do thank you for your grace that you show us. Lord, we thank you for God saving us, Lord, and, and even putting us in this race, Lord. Lord, we know that the, your commandments are for our benefit, Lord. We, we see that you place people in us, Lord, around us in our life that we can glean certain things from, Lord, that that they, that how they live out their Christian life. Lord, we know our ultimate example is you, but Lord, we thank you for giving us those people in our life that, that help us and that we can be able to use as good examples and role models, Father. God, we, we thank you for your grace and all that you'd give us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, well, just a few closing words as uh, a few closing announcements. Our men and women's ministries are kicking back off on their in-person meetings. So be sure to look at our uh, website, be able to get those dates and everything. Uh, our Magnolia Men's Dinner men are coming up real soon on April the 9th. So make sure your calendar has that open the night of April the 9th for our Magnolia Men and April the 24th, that'll be the spring, uh, uh, spring camps men's meeting and so uh, our, our meal as well get together. So mark those two dates down. Women, uh, you have some meetings coming up as well. April the 17th for spring and April the 20th for Magnolia. I'm not gonna go over all, all the details on the times and whatever, you can check our website out. We'll be making announcements, but uh, mark those down. I know it's been a while, People have been looking forward to having these fellowships and praise the Lord, they're, they're coming in the month of April. So be sure to be planning to, to be part of that. Also, uh, our kids fundraiser with the mask, uh, we're gonna be discounting those. I know there's still uh, places that you go that require mask and that's a great way to advertise it with Believer's Fellowship on the side of your mask there. And who knows, somebody may bash you about that and you'll have an opportunity to share with them. And so uh, we're gonna be discounting those uh, here this coming Sunday and the Sundays ahead. And so buy some, uh, it's to support a great cause for our kids camp. So you'll be supporting that. Uh, even if you wanna give a little bit more, it'll go to a great cause. Also, don't forget about Easter, April 4th. We got two services coming up, nine and 1045. We've got our Easter invite cards. People have been picking those up. Be able to invite people to an Easter service, be passing those out. People are usually, uh, that one uh, Sunday, uh, probably more prone to come to church than ever before, so let's take advantage of that opportunity to give out those invite cards. Also tonight, uh, whatever time you're looking uh, at this uh, video, at seven o'clock tonight, Wednesday night, uh, we are uh, having an Easter prayer service uh, at both campuses. So whichever campus you go to, be there by seven o'clock Wednesday night, this Wednesday, uh, tonight, and uh, participate as we pray for our Easter service. God will be glorified. We've got a lot of things we wanna be praying about, different categories of different things that we wanna lift up to the Lord for, for this Easter service. So come out and be a part of that as we pray together uh, and just trust God for a, a great Easter service. So. Anyway, just want to tell you, I love you, appreciate you, and uh, just praying for you and believe in God for great and mighty things as uh, he continues to bless us and we continue to see more people coming and being a part of the fellowship. Uh, and we know we still are online, but we're starting to see more and more people come and we praise the Lord for 
for all that. So God bless you until we uh, see each other again.